This video covers the difference between ser and estar in Spanish. Further notes and practice exercises can be found in your Tahoe's notes and practice pack. A little boy or a little girl whose native language is Spanish has no problem knowing when to use ser or estar. To him or her, they are two different words. They don't mean the same thing. When Manuelito wishes to tell someone who he is, he will say, Yo soy Manuelito. When he wishes to tell someone where he is located, he will say, Yo estoy en el jardín. This is where the problem arises for those of us who are not native speakers of Spanish. The translation of both soy and estoy in English is, I am. We use it for describing ourselves and informing others of our location. Spanish, however, has two verbs that express I am, not one verb, like us. English speakers have devised several mnemonic devices, or easy to remember tricks, to help them learn when to use ser and when to use a star. The most popular one seems to be stop the elf. It's cute. The S refers to ser. The T refers to time. The O refers to occupation, and the P refers to personal characteristic. In other words, when you want to express time, an occupation, or a personal characteristic of someone, you use the verb ser. The E in elf refers to a star. The L refers to location, and the F refers to feelings. When you want to express your location or how you're feeling, use a star. Although Stop the Elf doesn't cover all the differences, it's easy to remember and, as I said, it's cute. Another device that is even simpler would be to remember the sentence. How you feel and where you are always use the verb star. The assumption is that for all other purposes, use ser. There is a third device that is neither short nor cute, but it is effective. I refer to it as TOOP and TL, or Tender Loving. When using SER, use TOOP, T-O-O-P. The T refers to time. The O refers to origin. The next O refers to occupation and the P refers to a personal characteristic or description. When using a star, follow TL, tender loving. The T refers to a temporary condition. The L refers to location. All three of these devices are printed in your Atajos notes and practice packet. Let's review. English has one verb that expresses to be. Spanish has two verbs that express to be. Ser and estar. Mnemonic devices can be memorized to help differentiate when to use ser or estar. Before we continue, let's review the conjugations of ser and estar in the present tense so that we have something to work with. Ser is an irregular verb and appears like this with its pronouns. Yo soy, tú, eres, él, ella, usted, es, nosotros, somos, vosotros, sois, ellos, ellas, and ustedes, all share the form son. Estar is irregular in the yo form, and some conjugations have accents. Yo, estoy, tú, estás. El, ella, usted, está. Nosotros, estamos. Vosotros, estáis. Ellos, ellas, ustedes, están. Can you see the problem we have now? Both verbs translate am, is, and are in the present tense and, by the way, was and were in the past tense. So that we avoid errors in using S instead of esta, which both can mean it is in English, we apply the mnemonic devices until we become more comfortable and adept at using ser and estar correctly. Look at your notes. 
and use the device Stop the Elf in the following translations. Ricardo es or está alto y guapo. Ricardo is tall and handsome. It isn't referring to the time, nor is it referring to an origin, but being alto y guapo is a personal characteristic and therefore the P for personal characteristic of stop applies. The verb to use is ser. The answer is Ricardo es alto y guapo. Ricardo es or está muy triste. Ricardo is very sad. It isn't referring to time, origin, or a personal characteristic. Let's check under the E in elf. It is not referring to a location, but the F, feelings, applies and therefore the verb to use is a star. The answer is Ricardo está muy triste. How you feel and where you are, always use the verb as star. This mnemonic device also applies to the previous sentences. You can see that Ricardo es alto y guapo isn't talking about feelings or locations. Ricardo está muy triste is talking about feelings. The device TUP and TL, TUP and Tender Loving, although not quite as simple, gives a bit more information. Let's apply it. Marisol es, or está, cocinera en un restaurante. Marisol is a chef in a restaurant. Apply T-O-O-P, or TOOP. It's obvious that the occupation applies, therefore SER is the verb to use. Marisol es cocinera en un restaurante. Try this one. Marisol es or está muy enojada. Marisol is very angry. Two T O O and P do not apply here because it isn't an expression of time, origin, occupation, nor personal characteristic. She's not an angry sort of person. Generally, the T in TL refers to a temporary condition. That one applies because for some reason she is quite angry at the moment, but not her entire life. Therefore, the verb to use is a star. Marisol está muy enojada. When you have mastered part one of this video, go ahead and continue with part two, also using your Atajos notes and practice packet. Try the following exercise to test yourself. Pause the video while you work. Unpause the video to see the answers. For more practice, complete exercise A and B in the Atajos Notes and Practice Packet. Coming up next, Ser vs. the Star, To Be or Not To Be, Part 2. Part 2 of this video presents the differences between Ser and a Star, but with more in-depth and nuanced explanations. Be sure that you can apply the suggested mnemonic devices from Part 1 to handle the basics of the differences between Ser and a Star before beginning. Applying the concepts of telling time, origin, occupation, and location to the use of either ser or star is easy. There's not a lot of ambiguity present. Examples. Son las nueve y media. It is 9.30. Somos de San Diego. We are from San Diego. Estamos en San Diego. We are in San Diego. Tu eres ingeniero. You're an engineer. It is with the concept of personal characteristic and description versus temporary condition or feelings that some confusion and some subtleties arise. We will be applying the two and tender loving device in the following discussions. These sentences appear similar, yet have different interpretations. 
el viejo es enfermo. El viejo está enfermo. The use of ser in the first sentence applies to the concept of a personal characteristic. The use of estar in the second sentence applies the concept of a temporary condition. What do we mean when we use one or the other? El viejo es enfermo interprets as the old man is sickly. This is a strong statement. He's very ill. Using ser expresses the concept of being sick as a personal characteristic or description. As such, he's not just sick with a cold, he is seriously ill or sickly. In the sentence, el viejo está enfermo, the interpretation is that the old man is sick, but the use of a star indicates a temporary condition. Therefore, the person who reads or hears this sentence understands that it's just a temporary illness. This difference between personal characteristic and temporary condition is quite prevalent in Spanish. Here are some examples. Note the changes in meaning when either ser or estar is used. Lola es muy bonita. Lola is very pretty. A personal characteristic or description of her. Lola está muy bonita hoy. Lola is very pretty today. Today, more so than usual, we assume. Ellos son locos. They're crazy. Personal characteristic or description. They're certifiable. Ellos están locos. They are acting crazy at the moment. La manzana es verde. The apple is green. Its color, a personal characteristic of this variety. La manzana está verde. The apple is green. It's not ripe because it is green now and shouldn't be. There are also some interesting changes in meaning when using either ser or instar. The adjective listo generally means ready, so Pablo está listo means that Pablo is ready. However, note the change in interpretation when ser is used. Pablo es listo is interpreted by the reader or listener as Pablo is smart. The idea of personal characteristic enhances the idea of being ready into something that defines Pablo personally. A ready sort of person, perhaps? Its interpretation in English is smart. Pause the next screen and choose the correct form of either ser or star based on the ideas presented in part two of this video. Unpause to see the answers. Complete exercises C and D in the Atajos Notes and Practice Packet for further practice in mastering the difference between ser and a star. In the olden days, ser was said to be permanent and a star was temporary. Although rather simplistic, there is an essential truth in that statement. Ser is used to express to be when speaking or writing about things that are permanent, intrinsic, and personal to the subject. A star is used when referring to all things that are changeable and temporary. The use of mnemonic devices such as Stop the Elf, How You Feel and Where You Are, and Tube and Tender Loving reflect those differences in an easy to remember way. Ser or a star? To be or not to be? That's quite a question. <laughs>